Hello everyone. So today I wanted to get back to the topic of genetic code generation, genetic programming, which I showcased or tried to showcase on my live stream a few weeks ago. Well, actually one week ago. As you might remember, it started to behave rather weird at some point. The code was generated and something was copied. I was trying to code memcopy, by the way. So something was copied from place to place, but when I tried to run a disassembler over the code, regardless of which disassembler did I try, it actually didn't work. Well, you can see it on the screen, I guess, that uh, even if I run or the code was generated was like about 20 instructions, this is all that this assembler would show me. And if I would put it in IDA, it would actually just like show invalid instructions afterwards. But still, when the code was executed using the Unicorn engine, it actually um, worked and did the copying. So after the live stream, I started to investigate because, well, this is quite weird, right? I didn't understand what was going on and I prefer to know if I made a mistake. So it actually turned out to be a really interesting investigation. And I um, boiled it down to basically a couple of instructions. So I wrote a program with, which would output all the instructions which are executed. And um, this is basically the address of the instruction which is executed. And then there is the code. And here is the registry state before the instructions were executed. And as you can see, the disassembler doesn't really know what this instruction is, or the next one, or, or this one, or this one, but it happily, the unicorn engine happily executes it. So this is quite a weird case. So I started to investigate, I started to look in the Intel manuals, like uh, 8F, what, what is this encoding, what is this instruction, which instruction does it encode? So let's look at the Intel manuals. I actually traced it down to an opcode extension group, basically. And this is 8F. As you can see, 8F is basically a group, which means uh, if there is an 8F opcode, it will be followed by another opcode and three bits, the bit 5, 4, and 3, are used to denote the actual instruction which is going to be executed. And this group is quite interesting because only the pop instruction is defined. The pop instruction requires these bits, these three bits, to be set to zero. Now, all the other variants are not defined. And if we would scroll even further, as you can see, nothing in this group is defined. So this actually gave me an, an idea of what's going on. It, um, so my uh, hypothesis was basically that this um, the unicorn engine, or actually QEMU, which is uh, the unicorn, unicorn engine is based on, just uh, checks if the opcode is 8F and then doesn't care about this free bits, just assumes it's a pop instruction because, well, why not? Why shouldn't it do it? It's faster for optimization if you don't have to check additional bits. But um, this, this might be the case, and I think this is actually the case, and let me just demonstrate just that, and I'm then going to tell you why this is actually back. I did a couple of test cases. The test cases looked like this. This is a 32-bit code, rather simple. Basically, I push a value on the stack, and then, because as you saw, the 8F was actually a pop, I created an invalid encoding, the similar uh, one to used on, um, to well, created by the genetic code, which had the three bytes, sorry, the three bits, set to an invalid value. This is a selector for instruction, which isn't all zeros. So this is not valid. And then I would run it. So um, let's do just that. And let's do it on Linux. I'm going to be using uh, my ASM loader. ASM loader basically just takes a file, which is um, headerless, just contains machine code and executes it, like loads it into memory and executes it. And that it, that's basically it, all what it does. So I'm going to run this code on, um, that's actually VirtualBox, Linux running on VirtualBox, but it's pretty close to, well, because it uses hardware emulations, it actually should behave almost identical to a real uh, CPU. So um, I'm going to run this code here. And as you can see, it actually crashes. It says illegal instruction, and this is correct, right? When we serve Intel manual, there are 
there is no such instruction. This is uh, this variant and it's empty. It's an undefined instruction. Now, if I would run the same in QEMU, I would actually use QEMU um, user for this. So QEMU i386, which is, it emulates, uh, well, elf files, right? So I, I can, uh, I'm sorry, I can run asm loader through it and it happily executes. It doesn't crash. It actually reaches the end. And we can verify that it reaches the end because, well, um, it will probably should have a really weird value in the EAX. Um, I guess we can echo the error, the error level. Here we go. Well, it's zero. That's okay. It probably means that there was zero in the register, in the EBX register, which, uh, which is here. So that's fine. Now, mm, if we look at the code here and substitute this by a pop instruction which reference some, references some memory. And to do that, I'm going to actually do a quick patch to my code. The patch just clears the middle bits. It just clears these bits and sets them to zero, forces them to be zero, and I'm going to run it again. Okay, here is the same test case I showed you. The code suddenly starts to make sense. What's happening here is that there is a stack pivot here, which means that the EBX, which contains the, a pointer to the values which are supposed to be copied, um, uh, yeah, and it pivots it to, to ESP, so now the stack actually points to the values which are supposed to be copied, and then it uses probably the only instruction in a 886, well, one of a few instructions in x86, which allow you to copy memory to memory. And that is pop, popping something from the stack and putting it in um, under this address, and AEX actually contains the destination address. And then it's at, at 4, increases EAX, something, something, and there's a loop here which loops into uh, this address. So yeah, basically this is a loop. And this is a genetically created mem copy which copies something and then crashes, and it, it's not a correct mem copy. It, it's closer to mem set, but yes, it makes sense. It just doesn't work on a real PC. It won't work on a real x86, but because I was using Unicorn Engine, it does work on Unicorn Engine. So the bug wasn't actually in my, my code, the bug was in QEMU and Unicorn Engine, and I actually did report it. Um, before we get to my report, I did create, um, I did actually look at a couple of more cases and I found another case. The other case is this one, C7, which is actually move, and it's the basically identical situation. If we look at the same mm, table, it's another group, the C7, and we have a lot of undefined places here. So again, the same situation, QEMU happily, happily executes it, but it does crash on a, on a real CPU. We can test just that. Here we go, executes on QEMU, and if we run it on the real CPU, illegal instruction, bam. Perfect. I did also a couple of test cases for uh, Unicorn Engine, basically initializing the memory, running it, and if we run this, it should tell us that something is wrong. And um, yes, this is a newer version of Unicorn Engine than I had during the stream, and it actually behaves with C7 correctly, because the C7 was discovered before that, and somebody reported it and patched it in Unicorn Engine. It wasn't patched in QEMU, but it was patched in Unicorn Engine. So uh, yeah, on my stream I was using, however, mm, the, well, I was using an older version of Unicorn Engine, so if we run the same test here, test py, it actually, yeah, it should crash, but there's a bug. So it's fixed in a newer version of Unicorn Engine. Now, if we go to the GitHub of Unicorn Engine, this is the bug, mm, I guess number, not really the bug, is the pull request number for a patch for this group of opcodes. So this was already fixed in Unicorn and discovered before, and I filed the bug for um, the 8F group. So yeah, it turns out that my genetic programming was somewhat working. It wasn't perfect and there were a lot of problems with it, and uh, I'm actually quite happy because I learned quite a lot about uh, that, that, that stuff. So I did have, uh, I need to do some reading 
and I'll do another update on that later on. But it seems the episode was actually about genetic fuzzing and discovering bugs in emulators. Now, a bug in an emulator of this kind isn't really the end of the world. It's it's not a high severity bug. It's uh, barely a security bug at all. Why would it be a security bug at all? Because it can be used to distinguish between um, a real PC and an emulation. And for example, malware can use this to distinguish between, uh, um, sorry, uh, to distinguish between when it executes on a real user's PC or when it executes in a virtual machine of an analyst who is doing the analysis. So. It's worth patching these bugs, but there are a lot of methods to actually discover that you're running in a VM from a malware perspective. So yeah, it's like a super low, low bug when it comes to severity, but I would still fix it, because why not? Cool, so that's it. Thank you, and see you next time.